Hi, David and Chair Deep back and uh, kind of wrapping up our talk about networking. Uh, we've had a number of conversations about some of the cloud stack features uh, and, and just to, to highlight what we've talked about, you know, we, we talked about the different network topologies. Uh, you can have the, the flat layer three isolation of, uh, of basic networking. Uh, using security groups as as, uh, as your isolation mechanism. We've also uh, talked about CloudStack's ability to, to use VLANs and to either manage that with its own virtual router or to use external hardware uh, and, uh, and effectively give that self-service to the end user, uh, allowing them to manipulate networking, uh, networking equipment that you wouldn't dare even let them look at normally. Uh, we've also talked about some of the services. Uh, those services like uh, firewall and, and NAT services, uh, as well as VPN and load balancing. And that entire idea of, of self-service networking uh, has kind of brought us to where we're headed. And I think that's uh, a feature that, that's called network as a service. Um, so, uh, you know, this entire idea, of course, cloud is supposed to be that on-demand self-service model and, and CloudStack has been doing that, but we moved away from that, I think that uh, traditional topology mechanism to providing individual services or sets of services. Can, can you tell us a little bit about what's coming in the future and what we should be looking for? Absolutely. I think you hit the nail on the head. It's not about topology, but what's offered as a service in the network. And so that's what we are structuring our API and our UI around it. It's, it's always been there, but kind of in the background. Mm -hmm. um, so if you look at advanced virtual, for example, it's nothing but you know layer two isolation plus DHCP plus DNS plus VPN plus load balancing plus plus plus, mm -hmm. and then and then and then choice: Do you want a virtual router providing the service, or do you want a hardware device providing the service? So we made these choices much, much, much more explicit for the cloud administrator to design his offering as he sees fit. Mm -hmm. And then their customers now can choose the appropriate level of service they want from the network. Mm -hmm. And then once they grow beyond or they don't want such a level, they can change the network offering mm -hmm. uh, on, on the fly. On the fly, yeah. wow. So you know, typically when people have deployed enterprise networks in the past, it's been months in the planning and, and uh, and of course, then you put out a bid for the hardware, and, and right. it gets in, and then people spend uh, months uh, cabling it up. What it sounds like is that you're saying that someone could go in, completely change uh, what we would have traditionally called a network topology, and, and the, some of the services around there, That's right. and change it in, in basically as fast as they can make API or UI calls, right? Correct. Yes, that's right. Wow. So, so. Uh, it sounds like you know. Even originally, we we made uh, the administrator make a lot of decisions. You know, they decided uh, what type of network and and the range of VLANs and things of that nature. Uh, and it sounds like we're essentially putting more of that. Uh, you know, obviously the administrator has a has a decision about what services he makes available. That's right. Uh, but but within that scope of what they provided. That the end user can still then go out and say, you know what, here's the kind of network that I want, or maybe they don't care and they take a default, and uh, but yeah. they can they can do uh, essentially uh, whatever whatever within the scope of, of what they're permitted to do, they can just go out and ask for it, and it, CloudStack makes it happen. That's correct. Uh, it is it is extremely powerful, as you say, and then and then we just made it easier for us to hook in more and more external providers. Mm -hmm. So so one of the things that I'm constantly asked about is is where we're going with Open vSwitch and can you tell me a little bit about what's coming in the future there? So we already support Open vSwitch today in, in, mm -hmm. in uh, at least in, in Zen server but it just gives you the traditional VLAN model. Right. Uh, but what's more exciting is what is a trend today called software defined networks, mm -hmm. where you can uh, tell or program the underlying, you have a control plane which is telling, setting up the network topology which is talking to hardware devices which are just dumb forwarding engines. Mm -hmm. So the, 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 the brains are in the control plane. Sure. And so we're, uh, we have already explored uh, stuff in that, along that angle where we can set up, uh, for example, 
using GRE tunnels mm -hmm. or uh, something, a uh, new technology called VXLAN yeah. to set up these logical networks, which we, today we're setting up VLANs. Right. So maybe that even breaks, at some point in the future, it breaks that 4,090... Uh, Absolutely, because I, th VLAN. I think uh, the VXLAN is a 16-bit identifier, so that gives you, you know, right. much more. Actually, a 24-bit identifier, so that gives you... Uh, substantial. Substantial number of networks. Right. Just a matter of if you can if you can route that many at that point, right? That's right, and it has several data center advantages. You don't have to do traditional tree topology, you know, waste half your bandwidth in the data center. You can do a very sophisticated uh, layer three uh, ECMP kind of uh, topologies. Fascinating. So, uh, um, anything else that we need to know that's coming in the in the near future? I know networking as a service is targeted for Acton, which I think is going to hit around. Uh, January 2012? Or yes. Yeah. yeah. Beyond that, as I said, software defined networking is, is what we're looking at actively. Yeah. Um, you know, more and more uh, external providers, we're going to, NetScale is going to be supported fully in, uh, mm. in the action release. So tell us just briefly, I, I know internally we know what NetScaler is, but uh, what is NetScaler and what does it do? NetScaler is Citrix's uh, load balancing product. It's actually much more load balance, so it's an application delivery controller mm -hmm. all the way to layer 7. But in, in Acton, we're going to primarily use it as a HTTP load balancer. Okay. Uh, but it comes with a whole bunch of sophisticated features uh, and a whole bunch of configuration options. You can mm -hmm. run it as a virtual machine, what they call a VPX. Right. Or you can have a traditional hardware platform, which is the MPX. Mm -hmm. And now there's a new exciting offering called the SDX, which is just uh, VPX is running on very optimized hardware. Interesting. And so we're going to support all these models. That's interesting. So. So if someone was so inclined and, and uh, their hardware supported an API, it wouldn't be outside the, the realm of uh, possibility that they could add that even to the, contribute that as a... Absolutely, a I think it's going to be far, far easier than it was in 2.2. Yeah, so, so you talked about exposing some of those, those hooks uh, and uh, making, that, making that significantly easier. So uh, I, think, uh, I think we'll actually see a lot of participation around that, so I hope we do. I appreciate you taking the time. I know this was hours out of your day to, to sit down and plan and talk about this. And uh, I know you're a busy man. I hope you stay busy bringing, bringing great features to CloudStack. Um, if you're interested in learning more about CloudStack, you can certainly find out more at cloudstack.org. Uh, you're free to join us in IRC and hash CloudStack on a free note. And of course, we've got mailing lists and forums that you can also find and, and download. Uh, download CloudStack, play with it. Feel free to come ask us your questions. Thanks for uh, for for watching and listening. Thank you.